Cool. Um, thank you everyone for um, tuning in. Um, thank you, Simon, for arranging all of this and for the opportunity to present. Um, as Simon um, gave an introduction, um, I'll just be taking an extract, a um, uh, little snippet from, from my studies, um, just dealing with the relevant topics. Um, so I changed the title slightly to modeling the effect of stand density management just simply on pine spatula wood and lumber properties and how um, this will then be used to follow up um, a future study. So uh, in recent years or over the last few decades, I believe um, there's been numerous planks um, that has been destructively tested. Uh, at, our un at our department at Stellenbosch University. Um, and all of these thousands of planks that have been tested um, has indicated a, a few things, two of which, um, one being that the mature, the mature species um, seem to have um, great stiffness properties in, in comparison to the younger species. And then, um, Another, another um, finding that came about through all of these uh, various studies over the last a couple of years was that in the models, that, which was modeling um, stiffness, wood stiffness, um, one factor that came up was the relationship between um, tree slenderness and uh, wood stiffness. And um, in, in the, the different studies, it was also shown that tree slenderness is, is um, a result or is, is highly influenced by um, stand density or competition within the stand. And then that was basically the birth of subsequent studies which uh, I was involved with, um, which led to um, what is the effect or, or how can stand density be used to manipulate um, the wood stiffness of trees? Um, so, for example, if you have a, a typical wood density profile um, for a given uh, pine species, um, over the course of time, if you look at, say, the, the mid or the late 20th century, um, around about there, you could have a tree harvested somewhere in this region and subsequently you would have a given proportion of uh, what you'd call more mature wood um, versus a proportion of more uh, juvenile uh, young wood. And given this sort of scenario, you could have an average wood density of approximately this value, more or less. But let's say in recent times, um, if we reduce that harvesting age somewhat, and um, the consequence then is that you could have a, a smaller proportion of more mature wood. Um, and then consequently, it could be the case that your average density could then drop somewhat. And this was something that we sought to look into, into our study. So to put it together in practical perspective, if you have that type of uh, situation or scenario um, where you have, um, well, that was the one part where you have this reduc reduction in uh, mature wood, or, um, the, the ratio between mature wood and juvenile wood. And then the other factor is if you have the, the reduction in the growth. Um, in this case, you can see if you apply a similar pattern to a fast growing and a slow growing tree, um, if you look at equivalent board positions, which in theory you could expect to have um, similar uh, properties. Um, if you compare a slower growing tree on your right with a faster growing tree on your left, you can see that the Campbell age, the maximum Campbell age in equivalent boards can be almost as much as double. Um, and that would mean given your, your property curves in the previous slide, um, the higher the Campbell age in this region over here, the more favorable your density will be. So that's another consequence um, of, of such a situation between a fast growing and a more slow growing tree, um, given a differences in the competitive environments. 
So the objective of the, the studies, um, or this one particular study, um, was that to evaluate um, the relationship between uh, lumber properties and the tree spacing and the competitive environment um, as a result of the different tree spacing. And then secondly as well, to compare or to look more closely to the underlying properties of um, wood stiffness, particularly um, the microfibral angle as well as wood density. So one of the um, the or one the one study that I'm I'm particularly looking at in this presentation, we used um, two compartments up in um, the Barberton region. Um, so this is particularly doing uh, to to deal with um, the studies at the tree level. And so we have the couple of please ignore these guys over here. Those are incorrect. So we have the spacings um, up over here, four three up until two nine eight one stems per hectare. Um, and of those plots, um, those two plots, we have the um, what we measured the dynamic MOE. We have the distance and the time of flight. We can estimate um, the dynamic um, MOE of the standing trees, and that was done for the mon those plantation only. Um, and then as well from um, in both cases, or oh, I think I'll get to that in a moment, but for the Highlands plantation only, um, for the same spacing range, we also processed um, some trees in those um, in the same planting density treatments with the, with the following sowing pattern. And we got in excess of 200 boards. Um, and then from those, we subjected them to some tests, mechanical tests to get the stiffness, the spending strength and stiffness. And then as well for both the Montrose as well as the Highlands plantations, we also um, uh, extracted some cores or discs from which we then processed some strips and we sent that off. Um, and then with the help of um, Professor Robert Evans, we got some selfie scan measurements um, uh, and we got the density profile as well as the microfiber, microfiber angle profile from Perth to Bark to use in our analysis. Um, and then part of our analysis was to um, put a model together and we also looked at the knot count um, and this knot count was specifically within the highest, uh, the highest stress zone of those um, mechanical tests that we conducted. And then with those strips that we had, um, if we reconstruct the logs, as you can see on your left over here, and we count all those rings within the logs, and you can then correspond those to the rings um, in that path to bark profile that we got from Sylvie scan. Um, you can then correspond that and then you can then assign an average value um, for density as well as for MFA to a given board. So you can have the knot count, we can have uh, the knot parameters, we can have a uh, density value and an MFA value assigned to each log. And then because we've done strength and bending strength and stiffness values for those beams, we can then relate that and then set up a model, which was what we've done. So to look at the analysis um, for the path to bar profiles um, for microfibral angle, um, we evaluated a range, um, quite a number of different exponential and um, logistic type um, parameterizations. And we ended up with just a sim simply, uh, sim simple uh, modified 3 parameter logistic model. And in this particular case, um, the first parameter over here corresponds to the graph on your left, um, which influences um, only the starting value or the initial value, or you could call it the pith value. The second parameter deals with the middle graft, which influences um, the rate that we're modeling um, of this profile. And then the last parameter um, is a lower asymptote parameter, um, which corresponds to then your, um, your outward mature values, so to say. Then what we did on top of that, um, this last parameter 
um, alpha 2, we then adjusted to add in um, ring width. So I should say, though, in equation 1, we um, we allowed all those three parameters to vary with initial spacing. So they could they were all adjusted um, by the factor by the four levels of initial spacing from four three to two nine eight one stems per hectare, and then that a two parameter we adjusted with the ring width to determine well if we can account or if we allow ring width to uh, uh, attempt to account for the differences between spacing would there still remain an effect of spacing over and above um, that which we can account for. So that was the idea behind um, adding green width as well into the models. Density was similar, but slightly the parameterization was a bit different. Or it was the same model, but the parameters mean something slightly different because um, just because of the nature of the density profile. So in the first case, uh, the first parameter um, affects the upper asymptote, um, which could be your mature wood values. Um, then your second parameter is the same as the previous model, influencing your rate of change um, corresponding to the middle graph over here. And then your third parameter will correspond to um, an intercept value, which has an effect or an equal effect at all candle ages. In this case, we changed um, the first parameter um, and adjusted it as a function of ring width. In which case, you will see over here that this would have an effect of increasing the effect of ring width with increasing Campbell age. So at smaller Campbell ages, the effect of ring width would be smaller and at bigger Campbell age or at greater Campbell ages, the effect of ring width would be greater. So taking a look at the results, um, on the left you have the standing trees, uh, the dynamic MOE that was only for the one trial, the one spacing trial, and clearly um, seeing quite a um, sharp increase in in stiffness with uh, planting density increasing sharply from 403 to 1808 stems per hectare, significantly. So the different um, values or the different letters um, on each plot of means indicates um, different significance or indicates significance uh, between the two uh, for these graphs and, and the following graphs as well. And the graph in the middle um, also dealing with a tree level um, we have the MOE values um, of the bending stiffness of the mechanical test that we've done. And that was for the one the one spacing trial only. That was Highlands, I believe. And as we can see, the four three stems per hectare, um, the, the red line, I should say, was that, that which is required or stipulated in um, the building codes. Um, or in the in-grade testing codes. And the triangles over there are the mean values. So as we can see, the mean value for 403 was somewhat below the red line. And then the two in the middle was a bit borderline. And then only 2981 stems per hectare had a mean value that was um, slightly higher than the 7,800 megapascals that was required. Then on your right, we have the bending strength. Um, the bottom line um, is uh, the characteristic um, strength. Um, and then you can see that the um, for the bottom line is the characteristic strength for the lowest structural grade. And then the one above that was for the next level structural grade. And as you can see, there is no problems with um, bending strength in this case uh, for the sample that we processed. Then taking a look at the board level um, gives us a little bit more insight. Um, one thing to note from this, we can see that as we move to closer spacing, um, this would be your 2981 stems per hectare. As we move to closer spacing, you can see that the differences between the outer boards and the inner boards, um, these ones will correspond to the most outer boards over here. 
as we move to closer spacing, the differences increase quite significantly. Um, and then another, um, or, le or let's first dwell on that for a moment. So we can then relate that this increase um, between the outer boards and the inner and the inner boards um, increasing with with increasing planting density, as a result of the suppressed growth, um, as we saw in the first image. Um, my first or my third slide or so, where you have the suppressed growth on the outside and that creates this drastic sharp um, increase, which we'll see in a moment as well on the wood property curves. And then another thing um, that stands out is that your your outer boards over here on your 498, uh, 4.9, uh, 4.98 meter spacing, which is equivalent to your 403 stems per hectare, um, those are what you can consider to be um, of your strongest boards in your log. And this was not sig significantly different to um, the second strongest boards of uh, more closer spacing and even the weakest board of the most closest spacing that we studied. So no significant difference over there. And much the same is replicated in the bending strength um, results. So the model that we put together um, evaluated the effect of wood density, microfibril angle, and the quantity of knots on MOE. And what we did was we evaluated the influence, um, theoretical influence of wood density of each parameter on wood stiffness. Um, and we did that by um, taking a look at the changing, um, well, given the model, we we looked at what is the fifth percentile value and the 95th percentile value of each parameter. And we shift that from the fifth percentile to the 95th percentile for a given parameter, one of wood density, MFA or the knots, while holding the remaining parameters constant at their means. So we did this for each and every parameter while holding the remaining parameters constant at the means. So we can develop a type of um, influence on the on the model and we can see that wood density and MFA and knots all had rather similar type of effect on board stiffness but over and above the strongest was um, nonetheless it was wood density and the models are indicated um, the observed versus the predicted are indicated in the graph um, very little bias um, in the graph and could explain about 70% of the variation in wood stiffness. Um, still remaining with the board level results, we can see that as we move, um, well, let me start first with the ring width. Um, so for the four or three stems per hectare, the mean ring width was just about one centimeter. And then as you move to closer spacing, we move down towards half a centimeter. And the consequence then is that you have more mature rings present in um, boards closer to the pith. And this results in, if we move from uh, wider spacing to closer spacing, as well as from the pith outward, your MFA becomes more favorable, the more darker colored um, it becomes lower. In other words, um, the reverse is true for wood density. Um, it still becomes more favorable, but the values um, is is um, improved favorably as we move um, also uh, from the path outwards and also from 403 to 2981 stems per hectare. Taking a look at the profiles themselves, it's a single tree. And on the left, you just have um, low S uh, smooth lines. And on the right, we have what we actually modeled. And our results indicated that there was a significant difference um, in the starting values. You can see the for 403 and um, the next closest or spacing was slightly higher than the two lowest um, spacing treatments. 
and as well as the A1, the rate parameter was significantly different. So we clearly see that um, what stands out most is that for 403 stems per hectare, the rate of change of MFA across the cam Campbell ages is much lower than that of those more closely spaced, which shoots down um, much faster than that of 403. And that also explains um, the previous graph where we saw that um, for 403 stems per hectare, the boards closer to the pith, um, the difference between them, the boards closer to the pith and the outer boards was much lower, as you can see, or much closer, or much smaller, as you can see, than the than the more closely spaced treatment. So a board over here and a board over there. So it, it helps to explain what we saw in the previous graph. Then adding ring width as a, um, a parameter into the model, adjusting um, the A2 parameter. Um, and we can note in this case as well, this is an intercept term, so it has a constant effect on all Campbell ages. And if we just that, there remained a significant effect um, on the previous parameters. Um, and that alludes to the fact that over and above candle age and ring, with there is still some underlying differences that we have not been able to explain yet that is influencing um, these basic properties um, that has not been captured by the model. Looking at wood density, um, something similar is manifested. We can see as well. Um, this was the upper asymptote value, which was significant. Curve uh, at the outer wood compared to the more closer spacings. Um, as well for the second parameter, the rate parameter, we can see that the more closer spacings um, increases slightly more rapidly um, than the four three stems per hectare, which does not increase that fast. Then we added as well um, ring width to the models. Um, this is an error that should be read as well, so it was significant as well. Um, and we note that as well, the remaining parameters were also still significant. So that also alludes to the fact that even for the ring width profiles, um, including, uh, sorry, even for the density profiles, including ring width um, in the models, so the unaccounted for um, between spacing treatments. Um, if I can put that in other words, there is still an effect of planting density on these profiles over and above the effect of Campbell age and ring width. So if I can, if we can look at the practical um, implications of that, if we, um, the previous graphs over here was all on a Campbell age basis, but if we consider the ring widths and we displace those rings um, according to the different growth rates, we can then see some, some more differences. So whereas in 403 mainly was different from the rest, on the basis of distance from Perth, we see some more differences um, coming in between the closer spacing treatments. Um, and the results are that if we if we look and we apply theoretical sawing pattern to um, this average log, if I can put it that way, we can then see that you as we move from the pith outer to the outermost boards, the differences are much greater, or the differences between these profiles increases. Um, which was what I alluded to earlier, and which explains then um, why there's a, an increase between the outer boards and the inner boards, uh, why this increase, why this difference increases with increasing planting density. And much the same is true with the wood density profiles. So in conclusion, um, we can conclude that in, from this sample, it's possible to improve the MOE of lumber 
by inducing a more competitive environment um, through a closer spacing. And the MFA um, is significantly improved closer to the pith. The juvenile core is then suppressed as a result of this uh, closer spacing. Um, if we look at MFA, um, so one could consider to define your juvenile wood core based on MFA or wood density or some other parameter. In the case of MFA, it's quite clearly restricted. And then the labor recovered near the pith as a result of, of all of these reasons um, seems to display um, boards with better wood properties. And then we also noted that the ring within has, um, it will potentially have limited capabilities as a proxy for tree spacing. So uh, just a word of thanks to everyone that was involved. Um, there are many more. Um, I see Jakob Kraus is also with us, uh, was also quite instrumental. Um, just so thank you to everyone uh, who played a part um, in that study as well as to those who funded the study. Thank you so much. Um, and then future work. Um, so the study that we are leaning towards now, uh, which we have initiated um, with the following team, um, we're asking ourselves, can we include these with predi predictions, um, the prediction, um, projections rather in our scheduling, in our, um, in our planning, and the idea is um, we want to evaluate what we what we um, or test what we think we know and really um, push the borders of, of accepted thinking and, and to formulate um, enhanced optimization or enhanced selection, a selection system of compartments. And the idea is to assess um, when can we harvest a given stand um, the average wood density. Um, can we include these profiles um, in scheduling a, a harvest or a stand um, optimally? And one thing we were looking at was in developing an assignment type of, of linear programming where we can include all these factors, um, uh, different things, looking at um, even logistics at some stage, looking at um, machine productivity um, and a whole host of factors, uh, can we include then these profiles of wood density and then to find an optimal of when we can harvest the given stand, uh, given these profiles. And one thing we were looking at was using the system um, Eureka. As I displayed earlier, so the question ultimately with regards to wood density is if there's a constraint in such an optimization model, um, would that model then um, ask us to then delay the thinning or delay this? We then wait a little bit and perhaps push up the average wood density. So that is one of the questions that we wish to answer. So when should we harvest, should we consider? One of the questions that popped up as well was, um, well, as absurd as it might sound, well, well what if we delay some, some, uh, some stands on some good sites? Um, what if we push them back? Um, what is the consequence? Um, is there something perhaps that we can, is there some way that we can squeeze out some value, that we can add some value by considering these these factors, um, including, for example, these wood property um, curves in harvesting, um, in harvest scheduling. And so the idea is to, at large, to optimize the harvest of a particular volume of a given stand or of a given product um, of a given stand, um, given a particular site quality um, managed under a, a given regime and at a particular point in time. And then given the set of costs associated with all these factors for a particular, a particular product. So the, the third and the fourth aspects is where wood density, these profiles might be influenced. That is either the gradient um, or the absolute values. Um, which can have an influence then on product value. Um, 
Other factors that we're also considering is product mix. Um, looking at the differences between products mix, um, can we model um, different um, different standard tributes that is more favorable for one or the other and include that in our optimization models? Um, some things that came out as well was ovality and sweep. And for the purpose of this particular study that we undertaking, we decided to just reduce it to roadside, um, at least for the time being to um, just uh, shorten or reduce the scope of the study. So that is what we are looking at the moment. Um, with that, I will end off. Thank you for your time. Um, thank you.